Hi, I'm Nikolai aka 56 Miner, and today we're unboxing our January Basics box. This month's box is all about watercolor powder, a new unique medium that's like working with pure pigment. It's super versatile and I'm excited to show you it. We'll go over how to use it and talk about abstract floral illustration. I'll also share some tips and tricks that I picked up when working with it. Let's get into it. For our surface this month, we have a custom Portofino pad from the McNani 1404 company. This fibrous paper is great for multimedia work. Our next three items are going to be some custom colors of the Sketchbox Signature watercolor powder in grape, navy, and orange. Now because we're working with pure pigment this month, I would suggest laying down some newspaper just to protect any surface you might be working on. And for our brush this month, we have a Sketchbox Signature Filbert brush in a size 4. Taking our wet brush and a little bit of that pigment powder, we can see that the filbert offers some consistent lines and we can get really thin or thick marks depending on how we hold it. We can also affect our line quality by the amount of pressure that we use when holding the brush. By being conscious of that pressure that we're exuding, we can create simple leaves just with a single stroke. Try practicing this this month in order to get more comfortable exuding that pressure. It's really easy to overwork watercolor. So this month, try reducing how many brush strokes you use and allow for more white space. This allows you to create a really fun, abstract floral. And I've always enjoyed watercolors more when I'm using them in a looser, more abstract way. Taking a bit of our orange and mixing it with that navy, we can get a really vibrant green. Because we're working with pure pigment, there's a lot of color combinations in this month's box. And here's a good example of overworking watercolor. I'm using too many strokes and the pigment's not really working with me. However, if I go in and just use that pressure technique that we did before, I can create some simple abstract leaves that better complement our watercolor. And once our paper's dry, we can go back in and layer that pigment for darker areas. These darker areas give us a better sense of three-dimensional form, but I want to make sure that I'm still leaving that white space because that's adding a lot to the structure as well. Because we're working with pure pigment, we can get some really beautiful gradients out of it just by adding more water. Here I'm going to build out a couple flowers just utilizing the negative space in order to give it structure. Here I'm just focusing on the shape of those petals, allowing the pigment to pull and create those gradients naturally. You can use this technique to represent really anything. However, if you are interested in floral illustration specifically, I'd suggest checking out our September video where we do a deep dive in drawing flowers. Because drawing and painting, while there is overlap, there's a separate skill set to each art form. And those single stroke leaves are a great element to add if you need to fill in some space around your flowers. For multi-petaled flowers like a peony, I like to start by defining the stigma with some dots in the center and then use that to build out the petals on the outside. Just like with our turquoise rose, we're going to make sure to leave that white space between our strokes. This will allow us to create a little bit more structure, and I'm also diluting the pigment on my brush as I work my way out, creating a much more subtle watercolor effect. I'm trying to be very light-handed with my strokes to not overwork that pigment, as well as working in a circular pattern so that we can create the illusion of form. With that first layer fully dry, I'll go back in and darken up some areas with that great pigment just because I love the color, and add some leaves around that blossom. You can create a lot of really beautiful secondary and tertiary colors with these watercolor pigments, so don't feel that you need to work with them just straight out of the bottle. Our next item is going to be a bottle of the Van Gogh Opaque White watercolor. This is a super interesting addition to this month's box as it'll allow our watercolor powder to act more like a gouache. We can mix the powder directly with that white watercolor to create a tint, adding a little bit of water just to thin things out. And just like when working with gouache, I like to have my tints already pre-mixed. That way I can go in and just focus on those flowers. 
Here I'll do a couple daffodils, allowing that white space to give us a lot of structure, and focusing primarily on just the larger shapes. Mixing in some of that green, we can add a kind of background detail. What I really love about the watercolor is it allows you to see some of that texture on the Portofino pad. Adding a few more leaves just to balance out the composition, and maybe another small daffodil in the background. If you're not a big watercolor person, this is a great way to explore the medium that's more similar to gouache or acrylic paint. Our final item is going to be a Copic Fine Liner in Lavender. This pigment ink fine liner is going to be waterproof, which is great to work with our watercolor powder. Fine liners will give us a consistent line and are great for techniques like pointillism, hatching, or cross-hatching, which is when you overlap lines in order to create value. It's a fun technique, but just like with pointillism, it can take some time. Fine liners are great if you're looking for more of a minimalistic look, something that's a little bit more drawn versus painted. Plant life such as lavender or baby's breath is a great opportunity to do some dot work. Starting with our stems, we can create a simple minimalist floral illustration. Not really worried about realism here, just getting the idea that these are flowers across. And to make things a little bit more graphic, I'll add a ribbon at the bottom, which we can use as a label. Taking some of that diluted gray pigment, we can go in and add some loose color, reserving that darker gray for the leaves and filling in that ribbon color. Once it's dry, we can go back in with our fine liner, which really is what's so fun about the fine liner. We can layer underneath or on top and do a lot with it. That's all for this month's video. Hope you enjoyed it, learned a few things, and if you post your work online, make sure you use hashtag SketchboxJanuary. We love seeing what y'all create each month. And if you want to check out any of our previous videos, like that September video where we break down drawing flowers, you can check out our YouTube channel, and I'll see you next month.